just love listening to the quiet sound of mending, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll, we'll say hello. We'll get things started here today. Uh, good afternoon, everybody who's joining us. Of course, to our colleagues at Sucker and uh, the folks who are coming into this meeting now to join, join us here today. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that Concordia University and Force Space is located on unceded indigenous lands. The Kanyan Kahaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters on which we gather. Jojage, Montreal is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today, it is home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. So as you're coming into this meeting space, uh, while you are sitting hopefully comfortably and safely in your homes, we'd like to virtually welcome you into fourth space. For those of you who aren't familiar with Concordia University's fourth space, we provide opportunities for all to connect with what Concordians are working on. And in this case, with what is this sucker initiative and how can you connect with it? All of our activities are free and open to the public with the aim of facilitating access through interactive experiences to what our faculty members, our researchers, our students, our staff are exploring in their work. So as this kind of platform for community members, we are delighted to welcome you here today so that you might have an opportunity to learn more about the Concordia University Center for Creative Reuse while you make something. So far we've collaged, we've drawn, we've sewn, built and tinkered. And today for this final making session, we're exploring the mystery package. So I'll pass things off to the folks from Sucker to tell you more. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. Um, it's really wonderful to be here today um, with you. We've done five. This is our fifth session. Um, and it's been such a wonderful way to just sort of connect with people that are spread out across um, across the whole country. Um, a little bit about the CARE project and this um, these packages that we sent. Um, it started with the Dean of Students. Uh, Andrew approached us and was just like, we missed people what can we do so um uh, Ariane and I got together and figured out how we could um pack some of the materials that are on our depot shelves and as you can see Ariane's on on Concordia campus in the Green Ends building in our turquoise depot there um and uh, we had an overwhelming response. I mean, 602 packages got mailed out at the end, uh, mid-December. Uh, it took a little while to get to everyone in the far corners, but it really um, was a nice way to send a little kit of stuff. So as Anna mentioned, there was all of these categories of uh, material types that people could choose. And mystery was one of the categories. So we haven't actually looked at what was in those mystery packages for a while and Arian has one that he's going to unpack with us today um, but also if you didn't receive a package that's no problem we have lots of um, materials and ideas just to sort of talk and chat for this 90 minutes um, and make together I'm currently mending a sweater so didn't come in the package but uh, it's nice to have time uh, to do that in my day so um, I'll pass it over to Ariane to tell you a little bit about Sucker and then we're just gonna like hang out and talk for a while and talk about what we're doing and super informal we'd love for you all to join us in sharing and um, uh, and if you'd like to have your video on that would be wonderful um, just to note um, what is spotlighted um, for the Facebook Live and for um, the recording is, well, me right now and Anna before, but um, we'll just be Arian's hands there, the making, um, the mystery cam, calling it. So um, don't uh, feel like you're worried about your own um, face being on or recorded. So, and you're also welcome to just point your camera down and show your hands if you'd like to do that as well. So, Arian, you want to talk a little bit about Sucker? Hello, welcome everyone. I see some familiar faces, some return uh, makers today, which is really nice to see. And um, so I'm in the deep, our depot space, our material depot here in the Grey Nuns building on the downtown Concordia campus. Um, and we've been, the, the Center for Creative Reuse has been open since March, 2017. 
Uh, and what we do is we collect usable materials uh, from all, all over Concordia that were headed for the landfill. So it could be um, it could be things like this. As we open the mystery package, it could be things like old maps uh, from the geography department, or it could be uh, what else? Could be all kinds of different paper products from the print department, or it could be from an office moving from one building to another. So we get all this nice old paper. I think this paper, which has this really nice sort of edge on it, um, came from the president's office at one point in the last year and a half. So we do those kinds of things. We collect all those kinds of materials and then we put it on display in this sort of free store format uh, here in the Great Nuns building. So uh, during normal times, uh, you would be able to come here during our open hours and peruse the materials on our shelves and take them away for free. All you would have to do is to sign up to be a member. Um, and that's just to understand where our members are coming from. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we check everything out uh, on, based on the weight that it's, uh, of the materials. And then also we ask you how much you might have spent on the materials. So to date, we're, uh, we're close to $175,000 in savings. Uh, based on people's estimates of the materials that they've taken out. And I think we're close to uh, 20 tons of materials out for new projects. So it's really an interesting, uh, impactful uh, project. Um, and we're part of the larger zero waste community here at Concordia. And so I'm, I've started to, but I'm gonna continue opening this care package. That's a mystery and it's certainly a mystery to me. So um, we kind of, put a bit bit of bits and pieces from each care package, each previous care package into this one. And so a little bits of uh, fabric you can see here um, and different kinds of paper. As things digitize on campus, we get a lot of like old materials. So you'll see like an old, I think it's a library. Oh no, it's a like a, a weird uh, time, like an old version of a timesheet but it's sort of library card, index card size. Um, as Anna mentioned earlier, we had a really, Andrew Woodall, our Dean of Students here at Concordia, uh, put a little message together. So we have a little message from him in the package as well. Um, and then some, a little bit about what the care project is and who we are. So that was in there too. Sometimes people got um, some beads. This is like a little, shiny uh, purple bead, um, buttons, we get all kinds of buttons. Oh yes, so this is similar to that, that old timesheet. So old um, like library index cards because everything is digital now. So this is lecture et morceau choisi vandalism. I mean, 1941, written by Lucille Richard. I mean, kind of cool stuff, you know? Um, some old book pages. This is from a, at some point we got this donation of um, Who's Who in America, giant book volumes. And this is a list. And it says like who their, like their family origins and what they might, their job might have been. So I'm just gonna pull out a bunch of stuff and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna to do today, but maybe you all wanna share what you're doing today. Anybody? What are you up to today on this snowy Montreal day for those of you in Montreal? Got this cool reflective paper. Maybe I'll do a collage. Not really a collage person, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Great. Maybe. Yeah. I'll use an old CD to be my base. Welcome. Does anyone like to say hello? Nice to see you again. Maybe I'm gonna draw actually, <laughs> changing my mind. 
So we got um, the geography department uh, told us about this big cabinet that they had uh, in our the main one of the original buildings of Concordia, the hall building. And they said, we have all these maps, but we never really use them. So do you want them? So we ended up with hundreds of maps um, from all over the world and showing different kinds of things. This one in particular, I can't tell you what it is because the information on it is part of the other part of the map, but it looks topographical. Um, there's some interesting, uh, there's road symbols on it, some waterways. Uh, actually, there's something that says limestone on it. So maybe it's saying what kinds of, what the types of earth are. Um, I've seen other ones in, based in Germany where it was talking about, um, about traffic densities, which was really interesting. And it had different kinds of graphics on that. But yeah, all right. I'm gonna highlight some things. Sylvie, what are you working on today? Oh, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Sylvie. Sylvie, you're muted. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I received this back uh, slip stitch, back stitch uh, needlepoint as a gift and I've been uh, procrastinating because I've never done it before so I'm trying not to uh, be too you know try to get it too perfect and just start it mm -hmm. so it's um it's not it doesn't look very complicated it's all the same stitch oh, nice. yeah oh, nice. so that's what I'm attempting to do working all with right. fibers Nice. I'm doing kind of embroidery-ish. What are you making? Well, I'm just repairing. Um, but have you seen, I think it's called Shishiko. It's like a, um, a way of um, kind of stitching to add strength. And it like, it's often done in like straight lines or grid. Um, but I was doing circles and this is like around a moth hole that was in this sweater. And I added like a little bit of felting wool to oh. kind of fill the hole. But then I thought maybe it needed a little bit more structure. So I've been kind of just doing some stitching. I don't know, is that, can you see that? Well, it's really dark. I can see light and dark, but yeah. I can't see. Yeah, it's just, it is a dark sweater with, with the kind of like yellow stitching and then these are like three holes that were in there oh oh okay i think it's called shishiko um i got this really beautiful book um i can look it up it's called mending life mm -hmm. and it has a bunch of techniques i'm sure they have actually shishiko in here i think i used to do that i did that years ago to mend socks yeah mm -hmm. yeah with with wool yeah. So like you, you can draw out a grid and then like oh, do a pattern. That's sort of uh -huh. what inspired the idea, but you know. Go on with it. Sounds like I love those little jobs, you know, not too long. Not too long. Stuff that you can finish in a in a day or two, you know? Yeah. And that's brave of you to start a project. I love that. You just have it. You might as well start it, you know? Well, I figured I would Use everyone else as a motivation. Okay, now we're doing. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's okay. try this. I drop my needle. Um, hi, it's uh, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Um, hi, I got the originally got the surprise package, and um, I'm pretty much a collage person, nice. so I had done quite a bit of collage. Um. I have a huge batch of my own collage stuff. So some of the collages are in the series and they started, a lot of them start with your materials. 
Mm. And then some have only a little bit or they're just in the series, but they're mostly my own. And I can maybe show where they're going, a few of them. Sure. Would you like that now or later at the end? No, this now is fine. Do you want to turn on your video? How are you going to share? I'll do it. I'm going to switch on my video. Okay. But yeah, I have to be, and then later I can scan and photograph them. I'm yeah. not great sharing on the video though. Um, you so did pretty good. Donnie, you did pretty good last time. We, yeah, I we saw your diners. Animal. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In my video. Like, I recognize those cool. materials. Yeah. You recognize that's just the map. Yeah. Um, the card, actually, the library card, and some of the sticky numbers. And, yeah. And um, then you see there's bits of the... Um, book in this and then the flowers are mainly what I've added and this has to be touched up a bit um the green paper may have been my own I don't know I think the green the screen was not in the package but I'm not sure mm. we also sent some like paint chips that had like a very kind of dark you know like um nice saturated color oh yeah oh yeah there were there was a set of those as well as the ones um the ralph lauren ones which i haven't used and this is another one um and the main thing is like oh, wow. big picture of the butterfly mm -hmm. which i've gradually covered up and some of them are making them less beautiful and more funky and like the series is called um spring comes to the northern hemisphere <laughs> and like this one is mainly just the the main thing in the from you guys is the orange paper that sheet of orange paper with the lines and the this black one? center mm -hmm. that was sent out yeah this uh, one. like here it's just a smash tip collage of all these pieces of birds i had cut out and i used a lot of them that were like partly damaged that i had around Mm -hmm. And I use them in this. Um, plus, you know, you've got that hole that's going to cut out from the eclipse sun in the middle. Um, and this is another one. I might may add more. Um, and again, you can see it's what's from you guys is mostly this is shiny, mostly the map. Mm -hmm. um, and like this is a Persephone or Demeter Persephone figure. And I'm going to probably see if I can get a Demeter figure going. And the clock, uh, that stopwatch picture, it has a great chain on in the photo. So the chain is going to go in. Hmm. Um, and OK, this is. Now this is probably going to be in the series and I was going to use your blue paper, but um, instead I used a darker blue. So at the moment it doesn't have anything um, okay. that is yet apart from, from you guys. All fit. Still the silver paper and a piece of um, tissue. I have a lot of things still from the package. Um, and like this is another and it's only got a little bit of the map in it. It's just started, and um, this is going. You can see the little piece of the map in there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's not the greatest. No, oh, it's lovely. It's so wonderful to see. I think that you and I work similarly in terms of starting many smaller collages and then working on um, kind of parts as they come. Is that true? Do you work on multiple at the same time? Well, I started doing that with cards and I've got like a zillion, I've got like a, I think I was talking about, they have about a thousand cards and small collages. Most of the small collages are complete. They're more like um, journal type things. Uh -huh. um, but then I will all, I have a bad habit of multiple projects. Is it a bad um, habit? Says <laughs> <laughs> somebody I'm that is the same. same yeah, it's just super creative. Yeah, come on. <laughs> what it's like? Yes, we all know that table. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Many of us know that's that table. just a flash stuff. Wonderful. 
so well, great. So not everyone would say one. Well, <laughs> that's fair. To each their own. <laughs> I um, I have a, a a friend, an older friend who um has unfortunately just become a hoarder and and not my kind of hoarding like unfortunately to the point of what you see on some of these shows on television it's she she does not want to live like that anymore and so um when I participated in these care packages I thought well I'll go to her place as she has requested me to do I'm not imposing myself on her and uh, we're going to actually clear her out to the point where we're going to make care packages. Cool. As you guys are doing. And we're going to approach the city and some community centers and maybe some mini libraries and just kind of like put them here and there around the city. It's, it's not a huge city here. And um, when I was talking to her, you know, she she is hanging on to quite a bit. It, it does become, you know, an emotional attachment after a while. Mm -hmm. But I think the care package idea based on uh, what you guys are doing is that she will understand that people will love what she has, quote unquote, hoarded to the point that we're, that she loved it. Mm -hmm. It will definitely find a second use. It will not be going in the landfill. And mm -hmm. I think these little mini surprises um, you know, she's got lots of fabrics and ribbons and buttons and, and I think people will really, you know, respond to that. And um, also, you were mentioning the Sashiko. And I think the last time we talked, people, somebody was talking about Shibori, which is dying with some resist. But um, somebody here at in Moncton's um, uh, art hive actually introduced me to slow stitching. Huh. Mm. And I guess the short way of describing it would just really be collage with fabric. And then you're just putting different types of, of stitches here and there. And there's no rhyme or reason, but you're really enjoying the process of it. And, um, and sometimes you're just taking a fabric and you might dye it with tea or you might, you know, just random stuff here and there that the, the slow stitching and the care package are going to meet up in something that I think people are going to enjoy. So thank you so much for doing these four weeks. Um, it's, it's a shame it does come to an end, but I understand you guys have other things on the go, but uh, it's been, it's been a really uh, wonderful experience. So thank you very much. That's so wonderful. I love that you're taking that kind of inspiration and applying it somewhere else. I mean, there is so much abundance in the world and you are great at seeing the potential in that and sharing it with other people in the community is such a like beautiful way to show that the things that, that, that your friend collected will be, you know, appreciated and that it was, you know, even though maybe not um, useful to her in that moment, it, you know, will be put to use. And I can totally relate to that, like wanting, saving something for a future endeavor, and then, you know, ending up with some, a lot of something and not knowing what to do with it. Like moving is always a really hard time for that kind of um, process. And, you know, as we get older, you know, our houses, our spaces fill up. So that's very, that's be very beautiful that you're helping in that way. Well, I mean, she's she's approaching 80, and when I look at her her house, uh, she's the one that said, "Oh, I'm so sorry, but this is the this is how I live." And I thought, you don't need to apologize for that. But the the issue is is the safety issue. Mm -hmm. There, it is like on television, there are goat trails and and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, also in uh, Halifax at Wonderneath, which is another art hive. Yeah. They're, they're doing the kits but what I did want to mention is that I think you guys know this is when we can't get together we have to reimagine things that have just as much value but on a different scale mm -hmm. yeah I had a wonderful conversation 
um, with the art hives and um, with several of, of art hives around that are doing different ver versions of kits in this time. And one underneath is a really interesting example because they have, they've basically with their studio space, it, like designed and packaged um, kits for basically almost every week of this pandemic. I think they've sent out like 30,000 of them, or, like it's obscene um, wow. and an incredible way to sort of pivot uh, community studio um, and continue to like uh, pay the artists that they're working with to kind of shift uh, that. And they're uh, different in the sense that they're a prescribed kind of activity um, like a how-to of some kind. And you can follow what they're doing um, on Facebook. But there's also other models of, um, of packing um, kind of like per order, like you could put in a request and then be able to pick it up at a studio. Um, we've been trying to problem solve how Sucker can, like our space can get materials out. And although this, um, this project has been really lovely and we sent out, you know, hundreds of packages, it's a pretty small dent in the materials that we have in our space. And it's a, you know, like not a, a very cost efficient way to do that, sending by mail, you know, is very expensive. So we're kind of thinking about different ways that we can learn from those studios, like you mentioned, and, um, and see if there's a way to kind of set up a pickup system at maybe the library or um, some way that has access, but not directly in our spaces. So um, may I say something? Sure. Um, okay. I know the, the, some of what I'm saying sounds chaotic. A lot of it is um, a lot of things I'm mentioning are already in progress or almost finished in cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I would say Adam, I am thinking um, for a few people I know, like I had said, I would send um, someone I was um, involved in a group with. I said I'd send her a couple of my cards and I had got the idea. I'm going to put a little package in, in a baggie in the envelope and tell her now you make your own card with what I put in this. Right. <laughs> but like, that's not a mass thing. Um, I could certainly do it, um, but right now I'm pretty much working on what I have brought from the second of two moves, mm -hmm. and the first move was really the awful thing because mm -hmm. I gave away huge amounts of stuff, but at the very end, I hit the pandemic, and what happened was you know, people were very scared at that point, and Prime Minister Trudeau was telling everyone go home, mm. and I was just at the end of the moving, and I ended up leaving behind even all my personal artwork from Concordia when I did my BFA. It was all this stuff that was really valuable because I held it onto it too much to the end. Mm. Plus, there was a lot of stuff, and um. I would, and considering what I went through then, um, but also the fact that now I'm retired and I don't have to spend time running here and there and everywhere trying to eke out extra money. I can manage on the old age um, from Canada. Mm -hmm. Now I can actually work on this. But what happened is I kept getting stuff and putting it away for the rainy day because it had such great potential. Mm -hmm. That was what happened in the other house, but it was such a disaster that now I tell friends who, like I have a friend, she's always saying, well, I have these old clothes, but I want to go through them. I want to mend them. I want to sort them. And I want to make sure I send to um, the uh, Renaissance or whatever, the very best things. And I don't want to put them in those big bins when they're going to get messed up. So I'm going to wait until I can go. To I said, and I say to her, like, this is crazy. If you had a real crisis, you'd end up, you're spending so much time with these things that aren't important. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yes, it's good to repurpose things, but it should be a more efficient process if we do that. Like it's like what she's doing is an expression of hanging on. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just because it's taking more time than it should. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, that's, that's, I wouldn't say I'm reformed entirely, but that's like a really, really traumatic experience. And also to be afraid that if you tried, if I tried to bring that stuff somewhere else at that point, it was not a, it was a shared space yeah. during the pandemic. I mean, they might've locked the door and not let me in. Mm. Yeah. There was lots so, of, you know, that's, there's a lot of fear around. And that's what it. refugees go through. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that everybody is their own own way of uh, figuring out how to deal with the things that are already in the world. And each person can do their part. And I totally um, hear you and um, understand your experience. It definitely affected how you move forward, but it didn't affect your beautiful art. And I love to see that you are still seeing the potential in materials and able to um, collect and create with what you have on hand. And I think that's part of what we're trying to encourage is um, this idea that you don't have to uh, purchase a lot, that there is an abundance of materials that are ready to be remade if you're able and have the space and time to do that. But we also recognize that not everyone has the space and time to do that and it shouldn't have to be a burden. So um, yeah, thank you for sharing. But it's also, you know, everybody's doing their own, yeah, their own part. I love that. Well, I think I think what I'm saying is it's important that um, I mean it's that realism that is important. Mm. I mean, I have a fraction of what I originally had, and I'm working on it. And honestly, though, I think I have all in this house, which is like I have my books, I have a few filing cabinets, and some boxes I have enough probably for the rest of my life already yeah. <laughs> yeah. and we probably Donna we probably all do if we really looked around and and you know went into old closets and drawers and things like that we'd realize we have a, a lot more so-called like wealth than we think we do um, and I think that's another part about it is is looking at 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 wealth in a different way is is wealth the the money in your bank account or is it the the friends and family and the the things that last that are around you that that make you wealthy uh, if you will and i think i think it's the latter i don't think it's the the money in your bank account it's you because you can do so much with all the things that you have around you and the people that are you're connected to um and like well, all the people a lot of the return return guests here today are, you know, are uh, proof of that, is that people are coming back to continue to share in, in the making that they're doing. Um, and it's really lovely to see everybody's faces and to hear people's stories. Um, yeah, we, we just want to encourage that day to day, like Anna's been saying, is that just seeing that abundance, I, I actually don't know the last time that I truly bought like an, a, an art supply um it's it's been a long time probably at least a year if not more because there's so many leftovers and and like you've experienced Donna and in, in cleaning out your homes and and uh Suzanne is experiencing with her friend um that there's so much out there already um and so yeah mm -hmm. we just sort of look around and see the potential I also think it's all the responsibility of places and um, larger institutions to think about their waste. So like this project, Sucker, is, um, it has that same principle of using what we have, but it also is saying that... Um, that they're just because one person doesn't need it doesn't mean uh, it's not usable and it's not up to the individual to collect and keep um, a surplus of materials if that's not possible for them. So by providing a space, and I know that we're not open right now, but, but providing a space that you can come and access materials for free without having to go through that process on your own and collecting and keeping, then um, it takes that kind of pressure off especially as many Montrealers and many university students are quite mobile 
and they um, may pick up and move in another in a couple of years. And so like that uh, stress of collection, because it's part of their creative process, shouldn't be restricted to, you know, just what they can do on their own. Let's work together. But yeah. I see we have some new people that have joined us. Does anybody out there want to share what they're making? You can just share your hands like you can see on the mystery cam. Uh, you can turn on your video and show yourself if you want. Uh, have you been working on any interesting uh, projects? It doesn't have to be related to the materials that you see in front of you. It could be the materials that you have at home. Any projects you want to share? No? Uh, I could share if anyone, if no one else wants to. Please, sure. Daniela. Hi, Daniela. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. Good. <laughs> Lots of work, but pretty good. Yeah, so uh, what I wanted to do for a very long time was start sort of like a junk journal or a collage journal. Nice. And uh, I just never really had anything to, um, to really start off with in terms of materials, but um, when I got the care package, I realized I have a lot of those things in my house as well. So I went through my recycling and have like a big bag full of, <laughs> full of random things that I can use. So right. yeah, I incorporated some, some of the materials you guys gave me, but uh, I also did a lot of my own. So I had like, the cover is like um, a picture from a museum art book. And uh, oh. then I've got collages from uh, with your stuff. Wow. Got uh, Very nice. flowers and this flips open to reveal the map as well. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Then there's Big questions. So, <laughs> yeah. And right now, I'm just I'm a big fan of using staplers as well. So I got this together with like three staples and no glue. <laughs> cool. So it's a lot more fun. And yeah, then I have the back as well with that uh, part. What kind yeah. of book did you use for your base? I used a Sparks Notes book hey. for the Catcher in the Rye, which I absolutely hated. <laughs> that's great <laughs> but that's, that. that, that's a perfect example of what we're talking about is you you got this package and it had some things and then you looked around and you're like wait a minute yeah i have exactly. everything i need right here at home it's it's all around me um and really and i i really like your using staples as your attachment your your binding method that's great um, I try yeah. to use little glue as possible, but sometimes, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's mostly because my glue is just really not that great. <laughs> so it doesn't stick to anything while staples are fairly permanent. <laughs> nice. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem. I'm trying to find my altered book. I love altered books. I think it's such a... Uh, a wonderful kind of container to experiment in. Like you can just kind of like turn the page and like try something new. And each page can be really different and like grow in thickness. And I don't know, I just really love that way of working too. And then it's also kind of contained. It's not a huge blank page. I don't know. It's easier to keep, you know? Mm -hmm. You can keep a whole library of books you know different uh, events different times mm, kind of mixing like um like a diary or a written journal like it also yeah. shows kind of a process of time documented like a photo journal mm. are you adding any written components to your to your um art book um, so far I haven't done much writing. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't know. I guess I'm, when I'm making art, like visual art, I don't think in words. And when I write things, I don't think in pictures. So right. <laughs> it doesn't really go, go together in my head so well. 
one. Fair enough. You could write a better catcher in the rye, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I think I'm similar. Um, but part of it is preciousness. Um, with writing, you sort of always feel, I always just sort of felt you can have roughs and finish things. And um, so I have some books like um, but I find it difficult to make put art into a journal. Um, although I started that way with collage and sometimes with drawing. Like I think it's you want to have a product, you want to have a card, you want to have this, you don't want it stuck in the book as part of a process. Mm. Whereas it's perfectly fine to have all kinds of drafts of your poetry or whatever, or your stories or your journal. You can stick them all into the um the journal and it, it's it's strange because collage and writing are very close and that you you have building blocks from the culture that you put together mm. and i want to be able i'd like to be able to get over that so that i could integrate the two and not be precious about the art that i stick in mm. i mean my smash thing of the birds is a little bit you you guys are helping me toward that goal <laughs> And there's no writing in it yet but I have been doing like my writing has gone mm -hmm. I, I couldn't commit to writing a journal um, I would write bits and pieces and I don't really write them like a morning pages type journal but I've been taking poetry classes and um, the thing is too that I have my writing by hand and somebody will write me an email about something and I'll write this long essay that they'll never read in the email and I, I, stuff like that and stuff turning up on social media and I'll write a paragraph. And so my writing scattered all over um, the place virtually and by hand, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Yeah, I, I think that, that um, I also had to get over or kind of work through the idea of art making for product like um, is it for the act of doing it and like how you feel while you're there or are you trying to create something that like has a finished piece and I think that that um, that uh, like visual journals are kind of um, like books like um, what uh, Daniela is working on is kind of like a place to experiment with all of those ideas like junk journaling is a is a whole process and like I like that you don't have to, it, it's never done. And yet it always, like the progress that you make on it is value to like your heart. It's not like measured in what you're accomplishing. Like mm -hmm. I found the one that I was working on and many, many, many years ago and it's like an old children's book um, that's been adapted. And every couple of months I would pick up or longer, um, pick up and add something to it. But technically it's done. It's all of the pages are covered with something, collage and writing and not necessarily really like um, per like personal writing. It's more just um, like descriptions or things inside of that. But it's more just like that it's layers. And I really love that kind of seeing the potential and like, like weird unusual bits and then thinking about there is a place for that like your junk journal or your visual journal yeah. well what's interesting is i took a short um it was a is a paid course so it's a commitment in that respect um and just six weeks and it was to write what is called well you you may have know the term ekphrasic poetry where you start from an image. Strictly speaking, it's starting from a work of art. And so we've, we've used generally the, um, the teacher provided images, but he also allowed us to choose our own um, within certain frameworks each week. And that, uh, that has a very interesting aspect to, to start to bring those two things, the writing and the art together. Yeah. I have a question. 
Sure. Has yeah, anyone but... done needlework? A little bit. Susie. Well, it's 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 a very basic question. It's just when they say um, to thread my floss onto the needle, then they say not in one end, but they say do not tie the ends of floss together. So does that mean like my I have three strands? So that means I make three knots. No, you have to have you have to have an even amount for what they're describing, because yeah. what you're doing is it's basically a U, okay? So the yeah. top ends of the U are yeah. are the op open ends, and you thread that through, and that bottom part, which is loop closed, becomes your your it stays on the bottom so when you're passing it through you're actually hooking the u to anchor it wait i think oh you're... oh are you sure that's what they mean though and they because they they use the word not but well, maybe it's when you when you thread your needle sometimes a technique says that you pull it all the way to en the ends and you tie both together so it's a yeah. loopy knot together but i think what they're asking for is just a knot at one end and one loose okay that's what i did okay that's okay. what i did so okay. that it's only one thickness instead of two yes yeah that's the way i always sew anyway yeah <laughs> Sometimes you do double if you want it to be extra thick. Yes. Okay. Well, this, this one, the this U one method here. is is where um, I suppose you could use three strands. Yeah, then it would make six. But the U method is where you have your tail ends open at the top, and then the U is at the bottom. And then when you pass it through, you kind of hook that loop, and then it makes very very clean. Uh, a very clean um, stitch in the back because there's no knot. This particular method is no knot. Oh. So, okay. Baker's yes. helping. I will. Um, thanks. I want, I've I've already started. I'll I'll try that on the next strand. Thanks. No thank knot. You. You I have to go to class, but I just wanted to say thank you for all the sessions. Oh, You're it's welcome, been wonderful Taya. having you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, guys. Uh, Thank you. Wait, look who it is. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. <laughs> we have a guest. Mystery guest. Mystery guest. Oh, you're still muted. You're, you're muted. <laughs> mute. Unmute. Unmute. Funny how you expect us to hear that. I know. You can mute to power. <laughs> well, we're not. <laughs> well, if if you will, and this is uh, Andrew Woodall, for those of you who don't know, he's the Dean of Students here at Concordia University. Um, and we actually had a front stoop distance meeting uh, sometime last fall. Yeah, it's like September. September. We oh, set up some chairs six feet <laughs> plus apart and, uh, and had a chat about this, what would become this project that we're, we're in right now. And, really the idea of just bringing our community together while we're apart. And so Andrew, I, I welcome you to talk a bit more about that and, and share what you've been making. Uh, we've, we've heard that you've been making some- Also no history chatting. We're just chatting. Yeah. You don't have to also come chat. all formal and <laughs> <laughs> present or anything. So what, what am I looking at now though? That's really intriguing. So this is our, we've had a, cam a camera set up up like this uh, for each session um, and I just unpackaged the mystery package that we had uh, left over here and I'm just doing doing art. Are those doing... your hands Arian? These are my hands yeah. Oh because they were like <laughs> perfectly moving in sync to what you were saying and I was like <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah so That's... we're we are recording and it is going to Facebook um, but what is pinned okay. is just the hands. Um, yeah. This is live yeah. right now. It's been a nice way to sort of connect on multiple platforms with also keeping some anonymity. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is this the last one? Yeah. This is the last one. Right. 
for now. We have been talking about different ways that potentially we could um, just come together in other ways. I was thinking about a mending group or just another making. So it's possible it will continue, but for this session, like for this project, this is the last session of making. Um, and then people will be invited to continue to make on their own. And then we're collecting photos um, or uh, work that they create. And then we're gonna put together some kind of show for the end of March. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow, and so everyone's just hanging out, yeah. doing stuff. Doing <laughs> stuff. So delightful and subversive. <laughs> no agenda. <laughs> it's so no, great. no agenda. Um, I can get what I've been working on. Sure. It's, it's all very awkward. Okay, let me figure it out. One sec. Yeah. Did you, did, were you able to figure out your stitch, Sylvie? Well, I'm still on that same strand, so I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to do, uh, I'll try the other, okay. the other method that the other girl suggested. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's going to work with three strands. I'm, I'm thinking it might be easier with the one. I don't know. And but what's fun, it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, I'm just having fun with it. I'm exploring as I go. And like, there's a kind of freeing feeling with that. Like I'm not, so, and they, they even tell you in the instructions, don't get hung up on your perfectionism. Just do it. Right. Good reminder. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I'm the worst critic. No one else will see any mistakes. It's kind of funny. I was thinking about your the visual journal and then this mending that I am doing on this sweater. And it kind of feels like the same collaging with fabric and like adding bits and pieces, not really worrying too much about like what the final product will look like and just like going with it in a different medium, not collage, but with fibers. And then kind of with that, those like scrappy quilts, um, what are they called? Uh, crazy quilt that I was talking about in another session. It's kind of the same principle too. Like use what you have and just kind of go with it. Like one of the things that I find happens mm -hmm. as you work, um, either writing or trying different things, writing and, and also drawing and it's like part of what happens, happens inside your mind and your nervous system and your body. Mm -hmm. And part of the creation and the experience is really um, inside your body. So whether you're mending a sweater, it's not necessarily what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Like nobody might look at your sweaters and say, well, that's like a collage or that's like a journal page. But what's happening and your experience of the process somewhere is the same. And even like psychologically the same, what it means to mend something, what it means to cut something apart and put it together your own way or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was a bit struck by what Andrew said about uh, what we're doing is being subversive because I I mended a pair of socks last week and they're an off-white sock and I do have off-white yarn but I thought I'm kind of going to put a bright blue to mend my sock because I thought well what a great in my mind I guess what a great conversation starter right and it's like oh you you can obviously tell that the sock is mended because of the high contrast and it, it's it's sort of like I'm going to be subversive, subversive, is that the word, on, on purpose and make something that's not matchy matchy and it's not perfect. And, and then, you know, if, if people are interested in finding out why somebody like myself was every color imaginable ch chose to go with something different, I, then, then that's where the conversation starts about 
keeping um, things out of the landfill and finding a second use for it or finding a further life for it or, or, or just, just a conversation starter about zero waste and about uh, managing our resources mm. uh, better in terms of not buying and buying and buying and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of that when Andrew said the word submer submersive, subversive. I, I speak pretty good English, but it's not my first language. So I'm hoping I'm using the word right. You got it, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it makes me think, um, you, well, you re it's making me think, remember Eliot's poem, famous poem, where he says, this is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Mm -hmm. And possibly we can turn that on its head and say, this is the way a revolution starts, not with a bang, <laughs> <laughs> but with a little whisper mm -hmm. and a, a different color of salt that yeah. somebody starts to talk about. Yeah, totally. We're it's, starting uh, a revolution, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're we're joining one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the quiet yeah, one. I truly believe if we if we get people together and allow you know allow a space, create a space for creativity and free thought and agency, it's uh it's going to bring it all down, and that's potentially a good thing. I think mm -hmm. that, you know the idea that we'll actually get students together or other people in the community together in a space where they can believe again and uh, and trust. It's like there's no end to what we could do, right. and this is a great example of that. Even if it's not like you know a meeting to bring down the oligarchs or anything, it's just getting together and being free. There's nothing, there's nothing more powerful. Mm. Well, you know, when you, when we really document, it's not great, the great big bang revolutions ever really changed the world. They just brought in another version of the same old system. It's the little things that change the world. Mm -hmm. The bottom up mm -hmm. yeah the art hives that's a revolution mm -hmm. that's changing the world and no one's even paying attention really right it's amazing okay i have this dilemma so i have a sleeve of this sweater that's been eaten by moths this like sleeve, you see the end. And I did some felting in the corner, like I did on the other parts, but the felting is too thick to be on the edge. Is there another way that I could finish the edge of this sleeve that would leave it, I don't know, well, just not. Where does cool. the sleeve fall? Like it, like you mean at the cuff? Yeah, right at the cuff. What about once you finished it all, you just did the whole the whole cuff in felt. Mm. But they like a trim. So, so maybe just do one layer, just do one layer on the outside. And okay. so just finish maybe the uh, like do like a bias tape. Mm -hmm. Like fold over each end. Mm -hmm. And then put it put your sweater in the middle. Yep. And then you have your your two pieces. So you only have the double thickness on the edges and not in the middle. Which would be good because it's actually kind of, I mean, it's a lot of it's been eaten away. <laughs> so a little yeah. bit thicker would be fine. Could, could you weave something? Just go back and forth hmm. on the horizontal and then come back on the vertical weaving in and out. Would that work? It's just I can't see very closely, so I'm not sure if I'm if I'm understanding right. But yeah, so I mean potentially, so it's like a stitch, uh, like just like a regular sweater. So I could like go weave through here, through here along the horizontal, and then kind of 
stitch over, I guess I could build up like kind of like darning a sock. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Like build some yeah, yeah. fabric. Well, are, are the sleeves too long? Could you potentially cut that off and just put some type of holding stitch, mm. like a blanket stitch or uh, like with yarn just to yeah. ca cast it off, I guess is, I don't know. If, could you just roll it? Like roll, roll, roll yeah. it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea too. And you it could be here all day. There's lots of options. I know, I like <laughs> it, I like here. <laughs> I, I, about 20 minutes ago, I called the, the woman that, that, that we're going to organize all her, her house and whatnot. And she's very excited still. Oh. And so right. I'm, I'm, I have a pretty good relationship with the local press. So I think I'm going to go to them and then really get this conversation started because I find the here where I am, I'm in Moncton, New Brunswick, the, the zero waste uh, conversation is almost nil. And so oh in the past 20 minutes, I'm thinking, well, if we make, I don't know if we'll be as ambitious as, as underneath, but we might be more like they make 200 packages a week. Um, and they're, I think they're on week 42, I think. So yeah. I'm thinking if we can make up about two or 300 packages and the, and the community is responding, like we'll bring some to the university, to mm -hmm. special care homes, to the library, like the, the 80 year old woman that I'm working with is incredibly energetic. So I need to channel that some way. <laughs> but um, I mean, if I can get up to 602 packages like you guys, <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be fantastic. But what, like in our case, we, we, I don't think we'd be mailing them out. We don't have any type no. of budget. But um, yeah, the wheels have been turning definitely in the past 20 minutes since I called her. The other um, way of distributing that came up in that kind of brainstorming meeting that I was in was um, little free libraries, putting them in uh, like kits in those spaces or free fridges or connecting with an organization that delivers food that might want to um, like put a package of materials in with their, with like what they're already sending. So like to piggyback or like partner with a, with a, something that's already moving. And then you could also figure out like some stationary spots to just drop off like larger amounts that people can pick up when they want to. Like, yeah, we don't have stationary stores in in, in Moncton. We, Moncton is a city of about 160,000 people, but we have only big box stores. Mm. We have no oh. local clothing stores, no local shoe stores. It's, mm. it's, yeah, it's, it's been quite devastating to see. And it's, and it's a car city. So you, to right. get somewhere, like you need to go on the outskirts of the downtown core, which is where I live. I mean, I can't, there's no jewelry stores anymore like there used to be. There, there are no stationary stores, nothing. So it's so I, like the, the, the CLSC, like the equivalent to some kind of services. No, no we don't have that. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting setup here. But I mean, I'm not going to let that, that um, dis discourage me, but I'm, I'm, I'm just um, absorbing, Anna, what you're saying, because I think if I can um, identify as many community resources, uh, if, if there's, if there, I'm not talking necessarily specifically homeless shel shelters, but the warming shelters. And I mean, sometimes the people who are there are watching TV 12 hours a day yeah. and and so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not about to make a social commentary, but there unfortunately is very little that has been, you know, done for keeping people um, active during, during many times, but especially during the pandemic. I mean, so mm -hmm. many services that pe these people relied on are just, they're shut down and it's not a good situation. So I think uh, we're gonna try to remedy that. Great work. That's really exciting. Yeah, I'll I'll keep you guys posted. Cool.
And I'm, Thanks, I was Adam. trying to say, Andrew, that I had myself muted, how inspiring um, your work has been to me. Um, I'm, hard, I'm only kind of watching you out of the corner of my eye as I work on this other little piece, but you've had me get start coloring and doing all kinds of things I hadn't originated before. Oh, yeah, Arian's hands, they look great. Yeah, I, this I, is not where I was expecting to go down that today, but this is where I am and it just keeps going. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's very Baron von Munchausen. I can see your face and then I see your hands and they're not connected. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. It's really tripping you out. It's tripping me out. <laughs> The, uh, I don't know if there's um, if there if there's a, an association des étudiants of the University of Moncton, but you know the students might have some ideas of how to distribute stuff. And well, I'm in uh, contact with Symbiose, and Symbiose is the environmental group, and I've done work with them with because uh, I started the repair cafes in Moncton, and so I I. I have a, a good relationship with them, but definitely they would be, um, you know, at University of Moncton, one of my one of my contacts. It only takes me about twenty minutes to walk there, so. Perfect. Great. Isn't Dieppe the fastest growing city in Canada? It is. Yeah. And so Dieppe, Moncton, and Riverview have uh, three separate mayors and uh, they definitely have three separate ways of viewing uh, things and the <laughs> environmental accessibility in Dieppe is far far more sophisticated than than that of Moncton so they're mm. they're uh, they're a great they are a great resource the um, I know that for a fact that the library in Dieppe will be very responsive to our uh, packages it's, uh, I think there, they used to be 12,000 people, but I think they're up to close to 30,000 and they're, wow. they're, they're just literally adjacent. Like you just go one street over and then it's, and it's Dieppe. Um, and then across our small, small river, we have Riverview. And, um, and so we'll, I'll be definitely be approaching them. And then there's the seaside town of uh, Shediac, which is where my cottage mm. is. And I know that they have, they're, they're a town of about, in the winter, I think they're about 12,000. In the summer, they're about 20,000. And I'll, I'll, I'll be going there to, you know, like I'll, I'll probably go to Sackville where Mount Allison University is. And mm -hmm. I'll just go where, where I can because uh, I think this is such a great way to get people to you know, be a little bit more mindful because my project now is sort of like this macrame and I have to, I have to undo all these little strings and tassels, but it's my, my form of meditation. And so hopefully people will kind of understand the message that I'll be bringing. I don't want, you know, to guide them through the whole process. I think it has to come from them, but mm -hmm. if I can let them know that mindlessness is mindfulness, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. We should and be doing this in schools. Yeah, that's true. Right? Time yeah. to still. There, there's very little times that I heard no mm -hmm. or I was told no that I interpret that as an actual no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you said no, but I'm hearing yes. <laughs> Oh, you need, need me to go about it in a different way. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, my father built uh, a, a local trail here, which which connects Moncton to Funday National Park. Mm -hmm. And he, he did it as a volunteer his whole life. And he was probably, you know, my biggest hero when it comes to that, because, you know, it was sort of the, it's sort of like, oh, you're saying no, I've obviously asked the wrong person. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ask the other mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well it's exactly like Moncton mayor says no, Yep says mayor says yes. So there you go. <laughs> That's how they became the fastest growing city in all of Canada. Right. Who's moving there? Like how why is it growing? Uh there's a couple of things. Is that um New Brunswick is an officially bilingual province. Mm -hmm. 
Moncton does not take that seriously and Dieppe does. Mm. And uh, it, it, so they're very, very aware of the cultural diversity of uh, Canada and New Brunswick. They definitely have a 20 year vision as to where they want to go. Um, and uh, in New Brunswick, I mean, if a, a lot of people came from the Northern, what they call the Acadian Peninsula, which, you know, factories and manufacturing just co closed down, but they, they know that they have a welcoming place to come in Dieppe if they're Francophone, because they will have their services where they don't in Moncton. So it's, it's, it's right. an unfortunate thing uh, we're a little bit caught up in the signage laws and so on and so forth. But um, the mayor that is there has been there for almost at least 25 years. And wow. what he had on his to-do list 25 years ago actually came to fruition. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's saying something. Yeah. My, my, my sister lives in, in Dieppe. And I mean, like, it sounds like it's far, but it's, if I drove there, it would take me like 12 minutes. It's, it's one community is butted up against another. Right. And uh, they, they have very good partnerships, corporate partnerships. And uh, so they are constantly building things and just slapping, you know, like, uh, like they have a, uh, what do you call that? Like a, like a skating oval. Mm -hmm. And then a local bank has sponsored it. And then they have an, another thing and, and some other business sponsored it. So they're not using public money for these these ventures right but they're getting the community to invest in the community Ab absolutely and so and so that's where even like in in terms of the arts they are way further ahead uh than than Moncton is because they are willing to accept corporate sponsorship shamelessly and uh so you'll you'll have a lot more like they when we make the mystery boxes like Dieppe will be incredibly receptive to, to them. Hmm. Andrew, I hear you made a pair of glasses, <laughs> a special <laughs> pair of glasses. I Sorry, I still <laughs> it's very funny that because my family just goes like what are you doing anyway how old are you these are my glasses made from part of my mystery box and i use oh. them to to look at the world i've built with the rest of it cool. but, you know the, <laughs> it just looks like a flat piece of paper without the glasses on you put the glasses on and then you see the the beauty of everything <laughs> <laughs> Love them. So do you attach them to your existing glasses? Oh, that's so cool. No, I, I, there was a piece of, I don't know, a piece of like, string in, in the mystery thing. So I just, oh, I just, I like the, I okay. just tied the string around. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then okay. you drew, you drew on the acetate with markers? Yeah. Nice. I drew on the acetate with markers and I punched holes in the, uh, at the edges and I cut out a bit of a glasses kind of, you know, uh, form. Mm -hmm. In case we didn't know what they were. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You never know, right? You put something over your eyes that you can see through and people are like, what's that? <laughs> I mean, it could be a face shield, you know. It could be a face shield. Maybe I should wear these in a meeting, see what happens. Yeah. And then, you, make... can, then you can seriously just ask. Uh, and I have extras. Anyone who would like a pair, please raise your hand. If I was really tech savvy, I'd make a Zoom filter that was these. And then oh. everyone would see through them. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like it. What's happening? You're being zoomed. <laughs> You're being zoomed. <laughs> Zoom loving. Uh, oh. 
list of things that I was going to put in the chat. A lot of the things were other, like, things that we had mentioned before, like the link to art hives. I put, um, we were talking about mending earlier. So I put, um, there, if you're on Instagram, there's a hashtag visible mending that brings up a lot of really beautiful artwork that's been, or, well, mending that looks like, I don't know, it's just, it's visible and so beautiful. Um, I have a few other things. What else? In the chat? Yeah, I'm going to put a few things. Oh, we have oh. Um, the Creative Reuse um, Zero Waste Facebook group that, that started. That was um, because of our depot was closed. A couple of members got together and they started a whole um, trading uh, kind of creative reuse um, material exchange in Montreal. So that's pretty active. Actually, we just hit a thousand members what? with that group that that's oh. just like local trading, people sharing wow. what materials they have, um, trying to kind of uh, share what maybe they would have found at Sucker. So that's a pretty cool. Um, yeah, the, the beauty of it is it's not your typical trade, right? So it could be, I have a bunch of scraps left over from doing this crazy quilt. I don't really, I'm not gonna be doing anything with them, but I don't want to put them in the garbage. And so people post things like that or uh, a bunch of, they've been eating a lot of tomato sauce, but they don't wanna reuse the jars for something. So they'll put the jars up on on this group and and people will pick up on it and and, and get those things and do trades. and. Mm -hmm. um so it's been really nice to see that sort of come about in the last what are we last Year. 11 months maybe a bit shorter than that probably about probably popped up about eight months ago so it's been really cool to see it grow i hope that somebody's somewhere i'm sure they are is taking stock of all of these things not just locally but globally because um, in the past, like I just went to look at a, a new sewing machine just to kind of get an idea what's out there, but I'm actually looking for a, a better, a more elaborate, like I've taken my sewing machine as far as it'll go. And anyways, mm. and she was saying like, we have no sewing machines. Everybody's buying sewing machines. You go to the store, there's no flower anymore. And yeah. so, and, and, and in terms of these bought well, in Moncton, I'm part of a buy, just recently part of a buy nothing group. But I mean, I've mm. been trying to get on free cycle forever. And there's just no, you know, there, there's no steam behind it. But now, you know, and it's and it's sort of like these Skype calls, like people sporadically did Skype calls, but it took the pandemic to really get Zoom or at least the Zoom mentality underway that you can connect with people Mm -hmm. who might be a little bit more isolated and so despite the fact that the numbers are quite grim and if we want to divert our attention from that momentarily that these activities are just amazing and may not have necessarily come about to the point that they did without the pandemic I mean you know I'm, I, I'm part of the Globe and Mail craft club and like people are making soap and and, and uh, they're making, they're crocheting and they're all sorts of th things that, and they don't, a lot of them don't need, need to buy the materials because this is all stuff they had on hand. But mm -hmm. I, th I think this is a big slowing down, if I can yeah. use it terms for people yeah. that are just, you know, the busyness was taken away for some people. Yeah. And, and, and what, had, what has replaced the void is, again, for some people, been quite wonderful and creative and, and as we said before, mindful and just, you know, like I've started zero new projects, but I've finished probably 30 of them. And I, and I kept thinking, like, wow. why, where, like, why did I take the time to start projects? And it only took this mm. thing for me to actually finish them. So it's been quite interesting. And I, and and you know the 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 whole fact that the mental health has not really been addressed properly for the pandemic, uh, people are taking matters into their own hands in terms of creativity to get themselves through something that's, for the most part, 
on a daily basis, not quite pleasant. So there, there's mm. some benefits that has, have come from this. And the, the, and the benefits hopefully can be shared by many people because I know I, on my Facebook, I post certain things. And then all of a sudden now I have a friend who says, you're in my top 10 bubble or whatever, come every Friday and we'll quilt. And, you know, and, and then I go to somebody else and you'll say, okay, every Wednesday, let's make sure we go out for coffee or, so it's been really nice that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that people are, you know, they're using more of what they have, um, especially in Quebec with the, the non-essential item lockdown that we experienced through January and most of February. And um, there wasn't, I saw a big surge of buy nothing groups and people sharing like kids clothing and offering up, um, you know, boots and things that were deemed non-essential, but like very essential for people that needed them. And so people were much more likely to offer and share and go out of their way to kind of find something that was used and, um, you know, and make sure that it gets to another person that can use it as opposed to just sort of like, oh, you know, like, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. It's not really on my, you know, like priority list. It just became much more common and, uh, and needed, I think. So I hope that it continues. I hope that people do use their sewing machines that they're purchasing and do, you know, like think about not only making bread for themselves, but maybe for their neighbor, you know. Mm -hmm. I have about, I don't know, 50 bars of soap because I've been making these fun soaps, but uh, it's become a great um, item to have for bartering. Mm -hmm. and I've been reading about bartering for probably what am I my age close to 40 years but I've never seen it take off like it has in the past year mm -hmm. so it's uh I'm glad of all these things that I've always hoped would happen are happening um yeah the alternative economy that's popped up in the last year has been astounding and just the hope, the hope is, and we're all saying that out loud, is that it continues and that business as usual doesn't, you know, come back into the picture once, you know, um, COVID has, has reached a, a new low. But um, it's going to be about all these organizations and groups that have come together to maintain it and to, to really foster that resurgence of bartering and, um, because, and going back to that idea of wealth that we spoke about earlier uh, in this conversation is that we we have wealth. You you know, Suzanne, you have that with your bars of soap. Yes, you invested in the ingredients and so on, but it then that that becomes your your um, your A currency. currency. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, yeah, exactly. And so, or that that loaf of that extra loaf of bread becomes someone's currency to to barter for something that they're looking for. Um, and especially true in, in, in instances where we don't have access because stores are limiting you know, people coming in or the items that they're selling. Um, but there's so much out there already that we can just find if we ask the right questions and the right people. We get all dreamy in these conversations a lot. Yeah. I have I have two observations coming out of this. One kind of positive and one maybe a little negative. Sure. And this is um, one is I think a number of people began doing creative things um, as a way to um, or got involved because they had to they were trying to have their children entertained mm. and then found they participated with their children and that brought them into doing things, which is interesting. Um, the other thing is that um, I wonder what the impact this is going to be on, in the end, upon the semi-professional and the, especially semi-professional, but also the professional artists. Once people have received so much for free and once people realize there's so much they could just make themselves, I wonder how that's going to affect people. Well, it's interesting. I mean, people who have wanted to make a living 
from the arts. Mm -hmm. Well, it asks us all to continue to be flexible and pivot. I have a note in the chat here that Rhonda would like to show some, uh, they have something that they would like to share. Hi, Hi Welcome back. <laughs> so what is this that you're sharing with everybody today? Um, it's a blueprint for, for um, a boat for my Playmobiles. Uh -huh. And can you show materials that you're using to do your boat? Well, I'm using a shredded wheat box. Uh -huh. nice. I saw that in the plan. Uh, a Scotty uh, nice. tissue box. And don't forget, something for the watchtower. Yeah. A toilet oh. roll. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Universal. That's amazing. Good. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the friends? No, that's it. Okay. I have something. Um, so I'm on my second project now. Nice. We are consuming crackers at a very large rate right now in the house. <laughs> what I thought I would do, it actually, I took it apart and I realized that it's going to make a good um, stand. So I'm doing a landscape out of it. So I, I'm not an artist by any means, but uh, what I do is I look at landscapes and I try to reduce them to their most elemental shape. And so I've been able, it's, it's in pencil, so it's really not that noticeable. You can kind of see it there, the uh, two mm. chairs. And then I do a close up of some stuff. But what I realized is that the flaps itself actually allow it to stand on its own. Cool. It to my friend, she'll be able to like put it up on the shelf and I don't have to do anything. Cause mm, the problem with uh, canvas uh, type things is like, if it doesn't have uh, something to affix it on the other side, it's problematic. And I was like, well, how am I going to work with that? I, you know, I'm really a newbie to this. I was like, nature has provided and it's made <laughs> when it's ways. I don't have to worry about that. So that's been kind of cool to do. And it's also good that even though it's recycling, I still feel a lot of anxiety looking at the pile that's going in anyway. So if there's any way that I can use it, um, I feel kind of good about that. So, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Over here. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Rhonda. Actually, in, in Denmark, uh, at, in the elementary schools, uh, most often they'll have a whole year project where the only materials that the students can use are out of the recycling bin. They oh. can't use any new materials. So you have children of you know elementary school age and they're, they are creatively problem solving with exactly the items that you've been showing on the screen today. Um, and that's it. They got to they got to work with what they got. So cool, yeah. because even his uh, his Scotty's towel thing has like this little like insert here, which you can think of as a swimming pool he wants to make. Oh. It in. So it's really about looking at it differently. And like, I don't have that artist's eye. I'm, I'm trying to cultivate it to look at shapes and how I can use them to my advantage. And that really practice and sort of zooming out of, of objects and looking at them differently. And that takes some, some time and practice to do, but it's doing that with him and being able to share that with him. So yeah, it's been so wonderful having you guys here at all the sessions. It's really great to, yeah, thank you for coming. I know you're uh, wrapping up and this is a question for partially for Rhonda or who, whose child is incredibly creative, but I, I, this is more like a question and a statement combined, but I think what has happened is le at least what I've heard is people who have children who may have always been on the tablets in the past year, I mean, they've had a lot more free time and so once the tablets had to be put down, like they discovered that they had an awesome child, a very creative child that was hiding behind a tablet. And it's been quite wonderful to see, or at least hear the stories of their kids really flourishing creatively in the past year, which they, you know, they didn't think their children had it in them all just because, I mean, sometimes if you put a tablet on in front of them, I know it's really hard to take it away from them. But when you when they did, they they really discovered a, a, a quite a wonderful creative child there. So I don't know if Rhonda wanted to, and I again I know we're we're wrapping up, but I don't know if Rhonda wanted to say something, or at least from her experience or what she's hearing her friends with children do. He's not actually allowed to be on on things too often, so we limit that. He only is allowed his tablet on the weekend to do games. 
I don't want him to not uh, interact with technology. And then Fridays he's allowed, he has his own email address. It's very new. Okay. He's use the English keyboard and the French keyboard, which is in itself a whole learning, uh, a lot of learning thing, but he's pretty creative on his own. I don't have to do much. Mm -hmm. The thing that I feel bad about is he's not getting to collaborate with peers and learning how to compromise. So I'm a good playmate because I usually give in, but it's always <laughs> good to be with someone who's a little stubborn. <laughs> you have to learn how to deal with that. So um, have, have you heard of other parents who maybe had children who are on the tablet a bit too much, but they, they've limited their time and, and then saw this fantastic child emerge from behind the tablet? I think most parents would not say their children are on tablets for fear of sounding like bad parents. <laughs> I think a lot of people uh, sort of scale back uh, or don't say that. Um, there are also people who are very unapologetic about their need to use technology right now. Um, mm so that we can get something done, like putting him to watch a cartoon for 30 minutes allows me to have my meeting. <laughs> you know, it's, it's terrible, but it is what it is. Um, there is no, the meetings have to happen during- He's on the game a lot. Yeah, all the computer games. <laughs> We're all on screen time a little too much, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Look, here we yeah. are together on this, yeah. on this computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now. Yeah, I think it's a very challenging time for everybody. Like, I think that where we can carve out time to do something with our hands is, you know, this is wonderful where you can. And, and in some ways, it's nice to have a screen in front of us right now to be here with you. So it's all a give and take. And um, yeah, it's really been. I actually want to say this um, inspired Great. I do it once a month, every, the first Friday of every month, I do a little stitch and bitch circle with my friends. So I send it out. I'm like, you know, there's no need for you to like drop it, drop it when you want. And I left it open. And the last time was like 4 a.m. I was like, I'm dying, but I couldn't stop talking. <laughs> but it was good. And I got all my darning done. It was fantastic. Awesome. Well, that's a nice way to connect with your people too. You know, over an activity. That's great. Well, we've uh, we've reached our, the end of our last session, and I see Anna's popping. Oh, Anna. there's Anna. Her face is popping up. <laughs> Anna um, W. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming to the session uh, today and everyone that's come to the session. Um, it's been really amazing to connect with you uh, during this really strange time to make art with you. Uh, to get creative, to problem solve. Like, I feel like we've been solving some of the world's problems while we've been meeting <laughs> together here. Just been really fun. Uh, we encourage you to check out our website, concordia.ca slash CUCCR uh, for any up the upcoming updates about this project. So we will have a uh, exhibition uh, going up on March 22nd. Um, we're still putting the details of how long it will run for. Uh, what kind of platform it'll run on. Uh, we're figuring out whether or not we'll do a launch party of some kind. Uh, so yeah, check out concordia.ca slash CUCCR for that. Uh, again, if you have made things, please uh, share those with us uh, by emailing us at reuse at concordia.ca uh, and sharing anything that you've been making, whether it's something like this drawing here or collage or whatever it's been that you've been making with materials you have at home. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Anna. Thanks so much. Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore because I'm always <laughs> saying, join us next time. And now there is no next time, but I'm sure there'll be another opportunity for us to work together. Uh, it's been a real pleasure for us to collaborate with Sucker. We had so many ideas about how to get people into the space in a distanced way to do this. And, you know, eventually it became fully online. And I'm just so glad that people actually uh, came on board each week and participated and had a great time by the sounds of it. Doug and I are, of course, behind the scenes listening in the entire time maybe tinkering away as well one will never know um, but uh, Andrew thank you for joining us as well today we we heard about your involvement uh, throughout each session in this initiative so we're so so pleased that you were able to help sucker out and make this happen and all of you I see the hearts are flying that's so nice thank you for participating coming back and 
time and again and the new folks who have joined us the folks who are are staying quiet behind the scenes we know you're there we feel your energy thank you for joining us um so yeah if follow up with sucker follow them and get involved and always check us out concordia.ca slash four we have activities ongoing on a weekly basis of all kinds of natures <laughs> if, if that makes sense so please uh, check us out as well to see what else you can uh, get involved in or just come join as an audience member we'd love to have you we try to do as many engaged and participatory activities as possible all right folks on that note i guess it's uh the, the sun the sun the sun hasn't come out the snow has kind of stopped it's Monday. Let's make the best out of the rest of this day. Um, I know I, I know I will. Um, great to see you all, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thanks Bye. a lot, everyone. Thank Bye. Thanks, Anna. Anna Thank you. Thank you. Bye.